When it comes to burning calories based on activity, is it merely a matter of mass or is there something else at play? And as your efficiency gets better, can your energy expenditure actually get worse? If you've ever wondered if it's size that really matters or if it all comes down to how you use it, then this edition of the First In Q&A with JNA is for you. My name is Jonathan Montgomery. And I'm Ann Montgomery. And we're the co-founders of First In Nutrition. If you want to learn more about what coaching and community can do for you, head on over to firstinnutrition.com. And if you're ready to find out more about the impact efficiency can have on your energy, you're in the right place. Let's get to it. Okay, this is a pretty good question. Scott asked, does a heavier out of shape person expend calories at a greater or lesser rate than an in shape person? And this is a good question because like all good questions, it's going to come down to, it depends. Now, the simple answer to say is yes, a heavier out of shape person will expend more calories at a greater rate than an in shape person based on doing the same activity just by having additional weight. More mass. Just by having more mass. It's like when I put a 50 pound vest on and go do a weighted walk on the beach, I'm burning more calories than I would if I just did that walk on the beach without that 50 pound vest on. And when I wore that 50 pound vest right here in my belly, I couldn't take it off. So I was always burning those calories. There is a lot to be said that yes, heavier people, independent of that composition and independent of their fitness level, simply are going to expend more calories doing normal things than a smaller, more in-shape person will be. Now, the interesting twist to this though, now here's the twist, is when people start getting extremely efficient and when people start getting really good at certain things, jiu are really good, really good one of these because judgment aside on whether or not it's good for the sport or whatever, or this and that, and, and taking anything contextually away from it, there are a lot of people that are high-level jiu-jitsu guys that don't look like they'd be high-level jiu-jitsu guys. And they look heavy and out of shape by the description alone. But you watch these guys roll. And the mastery they have over their bodies, the things they can do, the technique they can pull off. I mean, guys that look like you would think like, we need to call the medic on this guy. Call the medics, dude. He's gonna get out of breath tying his shoes. Well, like cartwheel pass you. And they will be able to roll at an open mat for hours. And then you'll look at some 145 pound soaking wet, 155 pound whatever, even an in shape, you know, kind of jacked, 175 pound, you know, brand new white belt or blue belt, and they are gassed every round. That smaller person that's gassed is spending more energy per unit time than that heavier athlete that looks like they're out of shape. Because guess what? They're not out of shape for jujitsu. They're very much in shape for jujitsu. I used to run Lake Hollingsworth back when I was a wee lad, pre ann if that tells you anything, 187 years and counting. Yeah. And I was not a runner. I don't even know why I was running. Seems looking back at the time was a terrible idea because I wasn't very good at it. Is it a girl? No. Okay. It wasn't a girl. That would have been the first idea. Good, valid, I mean, valid point. Valid point. She, she knows young me. Young Jonathan. Knows young Jonathan. <laughs> Uh, I did have the dreads, I believe. So, you know, it was, it was back in the day in the prime, you know. Oh. Young Jonathan was running Lee Collingsworth. And this happened multiple times. I would see this dude coming at me, shirt off, short shorts, pretty short shorts, Jonathan. This was long shorts, Jonathan. In some short shorts and nothing else, man. Except maybe a headband. Getting it. Getting it. And this dude, I'm talking belly hanging over his silkies, arms are flapping, you know, chest not defined, moving in ways you wouldn't want to see it moving. And dude, your boy was hitting sub sevens, man. He was crushing. I mean, he was getting it. And I'm dying trying to like run some tens over here. And this dude was literally killing it. So why wasn't he changing? Well, one, I don't know where he came from, but I saw him over the course of months and never got in any different shape, right? Always fast, always hitting it, always running. 
he had gotten so efficient at that modality of activity that it wasn't generating the caloric expenditure that it was before or he was just replacing it all. But the point is, is you can be heavier and appear out of shape and be very much in shape. And in that context, someone who's not as skilled or efficient as you and is lighter could burn more calories. Yeah, running is usually my go-to example for this um, because it's so, I'm not gonna say easy, but it is easy relatively to adapt to running. We see a lot of people running half marathons, even full marathons, triathlons. We see a lot of people that are not in the same shape as some other people, some of the, the elite athletes or whatever it is because they've adapted, they've adjusted. You put your body through the same stimulus over and over and over again, and your body gets smart. It learns to use fuel and oxygen in a way that saves and conserves your energy because it goes, well, if you're going to keep doing this, I'm going to make it more efficient. So yeah, maybe your cardiovascular system is getting better. Maybe your heart is pumping slower. Your heart rates come down. Maybe your blood pressure doesn't get as high. So you're not using as much fuel. You're not expending as much energy. You're not burning as many calories. Your body is going to protect itself. And part of that is adjusting for energy so that you become more efficient. It's a great survival tactic. However, it can work against you if you are continually doing the same activity over and over and over and expecting to change your body shape, type, composition. The other thing is too, and there are people much smarter, much more versed in this than I am, but you just get better. So what does getting better look like? Well, your stride isn't over, elongated. It's more efficient. It's gonna be shorter steps. You're not gonna be running like Phoebe and spinning your legs around. Come on, let's go running, let's go! Your hands are gonna get more efficient to propel you forward. And that's just in running, right? That's why we talked about, or we've mentioned several times, as you change, your plan has to change to help you continue to change. The longer you do things, you just get better at things. And when you're more efficient and you're improving in terms of cardiovascular response and your physiological response, you're going to expend less energy to do the same activity. And that's where you can get to where it's like, well, the calculator's not correct anymore. No, it's not. Welcome to being a person and not a population. That's a really good, a really good question. And yeah, on average, there's that average, right? On average, sure. Yeah, a heavier out of shape person is gonna expend more calories just walking to the street yeah. than a younger spry in shape person will, but that's not always the case. Yeah. And that's where we wanna be careful when we try to apply generalities to ourselves as people. Sefer says, one of the main reasons I joined was because I had been running long distances for over four years and didn't lose weight like most. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until looking into nutrition did things change. And yes, what you'll hear people say often is you can't outrun or you can't outwork your diet. And that is not entirely true. The you in there is the part that's probably makes it not true. So you maybe can't outrun your diet. Someone can. And they're called professional athletes. Yeah. They're called people doing 12 hour bricks on the weekend. They're called people that are, you know, James Lawrence, uh, Iron, Iron Cowboy, Cowboy yeah. 50 Ironman distance yeah. events in 50 states in 50 days. Those guys are outworking their alimentary canal's ability to absorb nutrition. Most of us aren't doing that. And that's where it's like, well, man, why? I, I just, you know, 100 calories a mile and I ran 50 miles this week. Well, one, that's only 5,000 calories. And if you spread that out over seven days, that's not nearly as much extra fuel as we think it is. And the other time is, Maybe we're not burning 100 calories a mile. Maybe we're very efficient. Maybe our gait is super great for the terrain we're running. Maybe our arm swing got so much better and we're only burning 65 calories per mile and our calculations are off. So there is a lot of nuance to it. And that's why rather than guess and rather than speculate and rather than consult the charts on the wall and see if the stars aligned, we're just gonna take some information, see how you feel, how your recovery is going, how your performance is going, what the scale says. We're gonna look at all these factors and notice there's a multitude. We're gonna look at it all and we're gonna take that in with your feedback and we're gonna to try to make the next right decision using the least amount of change we can do to get the most from it. Great question. It was a great yes. question. I like that question. And Scott, I hope that helps, man. Let us know. If you stuck around this far, thanks for hanging out with us. If you like what you heard or think someone else might dig it, go ahead and like, subscribe, and share, or whatever the cool kids say. If you want to learn more about First In or hear more from our family, you can find us on the socials at, at First In Nutrition. 
And if you're looking for actionable ways to put yourself first, head over to fieldnotes.firstdaynutrition.com to join the Field Notes faction for weekly tools and tactics to keep yourself on the path to progress. Because the people that depend on you the most deserve you at your best. <laughs> You ready? <laughs> One day we're just gonna post bloopers. <clears throat> we got a lot of them. Mm -hmm. Three. Oh, two. You were, oh, sorry. I forgot we were recording on this. <laughs> we actually should make a YouTube video, like 30 minutes of just bullshit. This is it. Yes. This is the golden take right here. Golden jet. Robbie Weirdick. <laughs> we gotta watch that. It's not the worst. That was not it's the not worst. It's not the worst. You know what it is? Efficiency, energy expenditure is what's getting me. I don't alliterate. Ever. <clears throat> <laughs> this is why. <laughs> you can write your own scripts from here on. If you want to learn more about what coaching and community can do for you, fuck. Jumped ya. If you ever wonder if it's size that really matters, or if it all comes down to how you use it, then this edition of the first in Q and A with J and A is for you. You better I'm not to laugh. You better I'm you better give face. me like a look. You better give me like a. Mm -hmm. I'm making a face. I'm just trying not to laugh out loud. Yeah. <clears throat> Do it again. Do it again. <clears throat> Energy expenditure. I need to enunciate. <laughs> Which is fine because you restarted that if it's size that really matters so quick that it was like a half a second and I didn't have time to reset my face. So I think I'm just laughing. <laughs> you roll right into it. I was like, okay, I gotta keep going. Oh, who nailed that last line? This guy. <laughs> this guy. I don't know what my face looks like when you do the size thing. I just, just heads up. I have no idea. I can't see it, so I don't know. Well, I don't know if I'm like something. stank face or if I'm. If I'm gonna have to put like a fucking blush I'm face emoji over your face. Over me. Like a fucking <laughs> eggplant, you know? <sighs> <clears throat> Bless it. <Put> eggplant. <laughs> that would be funny.